the red hues of a morning sky, just one of a great gamut of colors that can bring pleasure and wonder to anyone watching. But where do colors come from? And why is the world full of so many different hues? As the sun appears above the dark horizon, it brings the energy behind color on Earth, the power of the rainbow. Things living strive towards color, Guta wrote, and color owes its existence entirely to the rays of the sun. Plants glow in the light of the sun, and through evolution, nature has created the most incredible range of colors. There is one color, however, which is so prevalent that it has come to describe our world. Set against the pitch black expanse of space, our blue planet sparkles like a jewel. In stark contrast, the grey moon is hostile to life. There is no atmosphere to paint the sky blue, no water to reflect a sapphire-coloured glint from the sun's rays. Sunlight shows its true character only on Earth. The rays of the sun are electromagnetic waves composed of many wavelengths. We see different colors depending on the wavelength of light reaching our eyes. To see all the colors of sunlight side by side requires one of nature's optical tricks. When the angle of arriving sunlight and the drop's density and shape on the flower are just right, the droplet splits light into its components. There is another natural phenomenon that makes the sun show off its full spectrum of colors. The process begins when somber gray shades are mixed in the sky and minute water drops are heaped up into cloud formations. If, even in the grey gloom, the sun momentarily pierces the clouds, then the secret of sunlight is revealed. Minute water drops reflect and refract the sun's rays, 
spanning them into various wavelengths. The short wave range appears blue, the long wave rays red. At the visible spectrum center, light takes on a green hue. When reassembled, violet, green and yellow rays once again produce the color white. Solid pigments of the kind used by artists work in exactly the opposite manner. Cyan, yellow and purple paint blend into black. Substances appearing black absorb all light, whilst white reflects all colours. These extremes are spanned by the millions of possible shades we can perceive. Amongst the innumerable colours produced by nature, two are of a basic significance to life. Without the red of blood, we could not exist. A substance called haemoglobin gives the blood its colour. It is responsible for the absorption and transport of oxygen. There is an iron atom at the haemoglobin molecule center. If it was swapped for a magnesium atom, then a new substance would be created. This new molecule is responsible for life's second essential color, the green of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll absorbs red light. It is a reflected green light that produces the color of leaves. The combination of chlorophyll and the energy of the sun enables plants to produce food. Oxygen is released as a byproduct. No animal, including ourselves, could exist without green plants and their waste gas. In marked contrast to their functional green, the coloured splendour of autumn leaves reveals that the precious chlorophyll has been removed. Dead leaves create a basis for new life. They can be overgrown by slime molds that form bizarre shapes as they move. It's only when the slime mold reproduces that its true beauty becomes apparent. For the fungi produce sporophores of wonderful hues. They may delight the observer, but the sporophores' colours have no known function. Other living organisms use their colour for a purpose. Viewed from above, this toad is inconspicuous, at least until approached by something novel. A ground beetle, for example.
In its defense posture, the toad flashes its underside. The brightly patterned belly is designed to shock and create fear, and it seems to work. Brightly colored markings carry a distinct message. Take care, poison. Though the ladybird's pretty dots inspire affection from humans, in reality, their wing pattern issues a clear warning. Any animal foolish enough to try and eat the ladybird gets a mouthful of foul-tasting poisonous liquid. Even as larvae, the ladybird's conspicuous colors indicate that they are distasteful. Those who survive trying to eat this disgusting morsel will be reminded by their bright color pattern not to try again. Ladybirds acquire their poison from their food and they'll continue consuming aphids even while they're mating. There are just a few select molecules that give life its coloured splendour. The uninvited visitor to this vegetable plot is after the most important of them. The humble carrot has given carotene its name. Through its many chemical variants, carotene produces a wide variety of colours of nature. Every year, nature produces one million tons of carotenoids, the chemical variations on the carotene theme. Pheasants display their use of carotenoids. The eyes of this bird contain the amount of carotene equivalent to that found in 10,000 carrots. But carotene does more than bring color. The pigment is sensitive to light, and aided by certain albumin compounds, it can turn light into the microelectrical impulses essential to seeing. Animals that use carotenes as a color have gained the pigment second hand. Flamingos extract their pink from primitive algae that are full of carotene. The tiny algae are sifted out by means of the flamingo's special beak. The birds pump water through a sort of sieve where carotene-rich microorganisms are trapped. When the algae run out, their pink plumage quickly turns pale. That's why zoos used to feed them red peppers, rich in the pigment. As a rule though, flamingos only suffer a lack of color in captivity. In the wild they remain in the pink. It's thought that the curious marching ritual supports the group's sense of belonging, but it may also signal the bird's need to move. Even underwater carotenoids bring a splash of color. Carotene can take on almost any hue, depending only on the albumin compound it's a part of. A carotenoid makes the shell of this crayfish blue.
The crayfish's relative, the lobster, ranges in color from blue to brown. When the poor animal is immersed in boiling water, the carotene albumin bond is broken and the lobster turns bright red. Pigments not only differ in color, but also in the way they're used. Melanin, for instance, combines with the hormones that control the emotions. Chameleons have turned this combination into an art form. They literally change color as the mood takes them. No matter whether it's aggression, happiness or sexual desire, these lizards have a color pattern. These two males inform each other by displays of color that there's only room for one of them on this branch. What are these spotted chameleons trying to tell one another? Their pigments fail this time to resolve their dispute, and instead the lizards rely on brute strength. Even the chameleon's mating ritual is controlled by colors. The female encourages her chosen male by an enticing pattern of pigments. Immediately after pairing, the female changes colour to signal to all other males that she no longer wishes to mate. Different species of chameleons use different colour patterns. Despite her bright yellow stripes, this female finds it hard to get her message across to the larger male, and in the end, a bite says it all. The menelin in the chameleon's skin functions like any other pigment. It absorbs most of the sun's light. Just a small part of the spectrum is reflected and appears as a visible color. But there are other ways to create colors. Despite the dazzling appearance, the peacock's plumage has no real colors. It is the fine structure within the feathers that gives the bird its colorful metallic sheen. The cells of the feathers contain tiny bubbles that split and reflect sunlight so that only certain wavelengths of light escape to reach the observer. It's similar to how a soap bubble produces the colors of the rainbow. In this manner, an object can appear colorful without pigment of its own. Irrespective of how light is reflected, the resulting color has a common function throughout the natural world.
In spring, there's a flush of new life throughout the Danube's riverine forests, brought on by the increasing warmth and day length. This is the time to breed, and on their return from Africa, several pairs of reed warblers have built nests and laid their eggs. There are plenty of insects to feed the chicks, but these reed warblers are feeding not their own young, but a cuckoo's. The colour of the chick's gape demands food. It is the stimulus that triggers the parent's feeding reflexes. The bigger and brighter the gape, the stronger the signal for food. The cuckoo takes advantage of this simple rule. The reed warblers see only the throat's intense orange colour and never notice their mistake. The power of colour is so strong that even the young cuckoo's obvious size difference doesn't make the adult birds suspicious. In fact, foster parents work harder than birds with their own young. Nesting birds like warblers are driven by the signals their chicks send out. They are slaves to colour. Normally, the nest provides enough space for a brooding adult. With a monstrous lodger, however, space is scarce, but the foster parent still attempts to brood. Whether it's in the woods along the Danube or a tropical rainforest, evolution has found uses for the power of colour. Whilst flowers can be garishly bright, many forest dwellers blend into the shadowy greens of the rainforest. They put their trust in the strategies of camouflage and disguise. Those wearing a conspicuous garb have a very good reason to do so. This tree frog's extravagant pattern proclaims its poisonous nature. The colours may even evoke bitter memories of the taste for the watching monkeys. Flamboyant colours often signal unpalatable flesh, as the tree frogs demonstrate. But this bright yellow frog from Colombia doesn't just taste bad, it's lethal. When in danger, its skin exudes one of nature's most potent poisons. The toxic secretions of a single frog can kill ten people. The Indios prepare their darts with the frog's poison. The briefest contact 
turns a wooden dart into a deadly chemical weapon. The sloth is spared. It is taboo for the Indios to hunt them. But there are no such restrictions for monkeys. The frog's poison kills the monkey instantaneously. For the frogs, communication by colour works. They are rarely attacked thanks to their bright appearance, but for colours to be effective, they have to be recognised by other animals. Sometimes, the communication system breaks down. Setsi flies are notorious for their persistent attacks on large mammals, including humans. To a setsi fly trapped in the Museum of Natural History, the world might look a little like this. Setsis home in on their victim by smell, but they'll only land if they can see a large patch of uniform colour. The mosquitoes don't recognise the zebra as a suitable landing area. The zebra's stripes save it from the fly's painful bite, but a buffalo looks like an ideal prey to the setsi. Apart from the occasional misunderstanding, evolution ensures that the animals that see them understand the colour signals. Take a typical spring meadow in Europe. There are colours galore, the plants advertise their nectar and butterflies their terrible taste. Many plants use colour to lure passing insects to perform the crucial act of pollination. The insect's reward is nectar. The plants compete with each other for pollinators. Colourful signals are their means of attracting flying pollen carriers. From an insect's perspective, flowers are signposts that direct the visitor straight to the sticky pollen. Some flowers have honey guides that act as an invitation to the insects. But they do more. They draw the insect to the pollen. The guides are often rows of lines that all lead to the stamens. This flower has taken the principle a stage further. First, the stamen with its pollen rises. The colourful honey guides draw the bee towards the centre of the flower. The upright stamens ensure pollen is caught on the insect's hair. Having spread its pollen in this way, the flower lowers the stamens to reveal the pistils, the female sex organs. If a bee with pollen in its body now arrives, 
the colourful honey guides will usher it around the pistil and so ensure pollination. The garden herb, sage, has an equally refined mechanism for pollination. As the bee reaches in to drink nectar, its weight causes a long stamen to stamp pollen onto its back. Colours aid insects in their role as pollinators. In the case of the chestnut tree, there is even a proper traffic system. Chestnut blossoms that have already been pollinated turn pink. This tells the bees that they have no more nectar to give. A yellow patch, however, signals an invitation. By means of these traffic lights, the chestnut directs the bees to its new flowers that require pollination. Colour signals aren't always that obvious. A flower's colour may not be what it first appears. Many a shade of yellow contains information meant only for the eyes of bees. Some blossoms show their honey guides within the ultraviolet band of light, which unlike us, bees can perceive. From a bee's perspective, white turns into a blue-violet and bright red into black. The ultraviolet signals make the flowers attractive to the bees. Red blossoms are designed to be pollinated by moths or birds, like the hermit hummingbird. They perceive what bees don't, the colour red. The bull sees the same colour during a bullfight, or does it? Why else would a toreador wave a red cloth before a bull's nose? The truth is, it's the spikes in its back and the cloth's movement that provoke the bull. The coloured cloth might as well be grey. Bulls are completely blind to the colour red. Many of our farm animals and pets are like the bull they have a limited colour perception. Most mammals can distinguish between green and red. The full richness of colour, however, is beyond their vision. Sheep seem to have little sense of colour. They see the warning orange of the fence as dull grey. To a horse's eye, bright red poppies are not a colour signal. As if to compensate for their poor colour vision, many mammals have a highly developed sense of smell. It is the smell of fresh meat that attracts mammals, not its colour. The dog sees its meal and the cheeky thief in the same shades of grey. A cat can't distinguish between all colours either. To a playful kitten, the colour of wool is irrelevant. The world appears dull underwater even for animals with eyes like ours that can see colours. 
At a depth of 15 meters, the underwater world is a monotonous blue-gray. These monochrome surroundings come alive only in the sunlit shallows or when artificial light is taken to the depths. By using a pair of color scales, it's easy to see how the sea absorbs color the deeper one dives. First red disappears, then yellow, and eventually green loses its intensity. Only short-waved blue light can penetrate greater depths. The beam of a spotlight shows how colorful this dark world could be. The biological reason for the sumptuous colors of the deep remains a mystery. Predators such as moray eels rely on other senses than vision. The water is full of odors, chemical signals, and the fish here depend on them more than the weak blue light that filters down from the distant surface. It is a strange paradox that some of the planet's most colorful creatures live underwater, where all colors are subdued. The meaning of color under the sea remains a secret. Do these abstract experiments with colors have any meaning? Sadly, the artist can't explain them. Small wonder as they are the work of the orangutan called Nonya from the Chambron Zoo in Vienna. Nonya has been experimenting with colour for several years. By now, she has become a proficient artist and her paintings fetch high prices at auctions. For Nonya, it's the handling of the paints that's important. Sometimes she finds them good enough to eat. We humans have an intense relationship with colors. Like Nonya, our color vision is highly developed. For children, color can sometimes be as much about the sense of touch as of vision. Science has yet to fully understand how we perceive colour, though we do know how the light-sensitive cells of the retina work. It's still an enigma how the impression of colour enters our consciousness. Colours have a powerful effect on our minds. They can influence our moods, soothe or excite, express happiness or aggression. We may perceive colours by other routes than our eyes. Our bodies might be directly influenced by coloured light. If a blind man is exposed to blue light, his body temperature may drop.
In green light, the temperature rises again, reaching its highest point in orange red. The human brain reacts differently to different colours. Green, for example, comes from middle of the spectrum, and some claim that's why soft green shades have a soothing effect. Considering the importance colours have for us, we all look rather plain. Perhaps that's why clothes and makeup are so important. Pigments extracted from animals or plants help make the world a more colourful place. Each human culture uses body painting and tattoos to make a visual statement. It's not just skin that we use for effect. For thousands of years, we have been making and wearing colorful clothes. Colored tissues and stones have been discovered in ancient Egyptian tombs. South and Central American cultures produce textiles whose color was derived from the cochineal bug. And in Europe, the purple from a snail became a symbol of power. <laughs> The district of dyes in the Moroccan town of Fez looks like a huge paint box. Even today, materials are dyed here according to traditional methods. Each man is a specialist in just one colour and holds a secret of how to create his shade. The spectrum of colours we can wring from nature is limited. That's why, to satisfy our desire for new colours, we have turned to synthetic dyes. Just like chameleons or birds of paradise, we not only use colours as a means of adornment, but also for communication. Whilst animals may communicate in the same way for millions of years, our colour language changes more quickly, sometimes within a matter of months. People from other cultures have maintained a more traditional relationship with colours. In Utah's Monument Valley, there are still people who know about the old bond with nature. The Navajo Indians have cultivated a language of shapes and colours to pay homage to nature.
Billy Yellow is a 98-year-old medicine man. He is continuing the ancient tradition of sand painting. The pictures depict legends from the Navajo culture's folklore and represent natural phenomena with symbols. The coloured earth tells of encounters with eagles, prairie dogs or snakes, and with mythical creatures such as the Spider-Man, the Buffalo Man or the Rainbow Goddess. These intricate works of art have a religious significance and play a part in ceremonies. As the origin of all colors, the sun holds a prominent place in Navajo religion. Old Indian legends even tell of journeys to the sun. But it is the sun's rays that journey to us, bringing warmth and light to our planet. On occasion, a solar wind, composed of charged atomic particles, is drawn to the magnetic poles. As these particles enter our atmosphere, they collide with air molecules. The millions of impacts produce the flickering dancing light, named after the Greek goddess of dawn, Aurora. Even messages from the ancient universe are color-coded. The light spectrum of distant galaxies becomes redder as the clusters of stars move away from us. When big stars expire after billions of years, they shrink and concentrate their mass into a tiny point. There's no escape from that black hole, not even for light. It's only where the force of gravity becomes unlimited that the power of the rainbow ends. <laughs> 